if you go into the woods, you'll see huge rocks that are split apart by such a seed. How does a little seed like that have the power to split a big rock? It does. And that force is the life force of Krishna, the all powerful. Who's yes. Well, I don't know what's going to happen, but I know that when Krishna wants something to happen, it's almost miraculous the way things click in the shape. And I called Srila Bhaktapa this morning asked him if he would be interested in having an 80-year-old woman by the name of Anne Wigmore, who started the wheatgrass movement in the entire United States. And he said, we're interested. Come here. Now, here is the Krishna's miracle. I called my friend Jean Jaffe, who works with Anne, and got his answering machine in Ohio. His sister was in Boston with Anne Wigmore between 9.30 in the morning and just before noon, called the answering machine to see what was on it, got back to me, and she was having lunch with Anne Wigmore in 10 minutes and got the message that Srila Bhaktapat was interested. Hare Krishna. The title of Krishna's qualities, he's a very uh, uh, given. <clears throat> just when you just when you think he's going to, to kick you out, of new Vrindavan, he always gives you another chance. He's merciful. <coughs> it says that his compassion is from everlasting to everlasting. <coughs> <laughs> well, we were talking today about the Sanskrit language versus the English language in our worship, and I was thinking this afternoon, when I was preparing for tomorrow's class, how actually the Lord is receiving languages in prayers all over the world at the same time. He's hearing languages on the higher planets, he's hearing languages on the lower planets, and he's hearing languages all over the world. Well, what is one of his qualities? He's expert language. Expert linguist. <laughs> right. <clears throat> so there's no question of his having difficulty understanding English. <laughs> <laughs> Which happens at the present moment to be the language that more people speak in the world than any other language. much about the painting of Makan Chor, that is baby Krishna eating butter. I was told that people wouldn't understand. In that picture, it, it, it depicts Krishna eating butter and the pastime is that he's stealing that butter behind his parents' back. And then he goes to the neighbor's cells and does the same and breaks the pots and shares it with the monkeys. So in other words, Krishna is known as a butter thief, as a thief. That's one of Krishna's qualities, that he steals. But as a matter of fact, it may not be understood uh, by everyone, especially if it is not explained properly. But when it is explained, I find that the reaction of people is that of marveling uh, about uh, the supremacy of Krishna, how beautiful he is and how supreme he is. That this supreme being, although he is Sarva Loka Maheshvara, which means the owner, the proprietor of all the planetary systems, still he finds pleasure in stealing butter from devotee parents and from whoever is interested in having a, a, re a relationship with him, a, a relationship of love. 
what would happen is that after stealing the Bara, he would go run away. And his parents and neighbors would chase after him until they finally catch him. And upon catching him, Krishna would uh, break into sobs, into tears. So then, then the people's anger would immediately transform into tears as well, so that they would embrace Krishna. And it says that the goal of life is actually to make the heart so soft, soft like butter, so that Krishna will want to come and steal it. <laughs> <laughs> Another quality about Krishna's stealing is that everyone is pleased when Krishna steals. <laughs> if Krishna steals your butter, it makes you happy. In the material way, if one steals, one feels deprived. One is unhappy. One is in anxiety. But in when Krishna steals, it is all good because he is all good and everything he does is good. Any other quality? I have another story about Krishna stealing. Um, <laughs> one of my employees was uh, casting a, a real big deity of Radha Chandra yesterday. And we worked like for two days straight on it. And uh, what happened was there was some problem with it. It was leaking. So for like hours he was the resin was coming out, and he was putting it back in, waiting for it to you know, get hard. And uh, finally it got hard, but um, he was so worried about it that he, that he came in today, which is Saturday, they don't, they don't work on Saturday. He didn't want to get paid or anything for today, he just wanted to come in and make sure it was <laughs> turned out all right. And he said, you know, I was having dreams all night about that Krishna meeting. <laughs> 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 he was so concerned about it. And when he came out and we took it out and it was, it was perfect and he was like, he was like really like happy. <laughs> yeah. so Krishna like, you see he is becoming Krishna conscious. Yeah, yeah. Krishna is, by, by associating with Krishna just a little bit, just by making a deity, he's becoming uh, absorbed and attractive. Yeah. <clears throat> Garland from what? Kisses Kisses. 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 Well, one of Krishna's qualities, and it goes by uh, his name, is Madhusudana, the chastiser of the demon Madhu. And this is one thing that I've been reflecting on well, re recently is how Krishna is constantly trying to subdue my mind and chastise my mind because it's it's my enemy. And I was wondering if you could expound on how we uh, can release the mind to Krishna to do as he wills with it. The demons are killed by Krishna and doubts or difficulties are also called demons because they try to kill Krishna. But Krishna will kill them if we put them in contact with Krishna. <clears throat> Therefore, when we call Krishna by calling his name, we give Krishna the opportunity to slay the demons. Also, when we engage in devotional service, which is Krishna's internal potency, we slay the demons. We have a saying in English, an idle mind is the devil's workshop. So, if we keep the mind very active, always thinking, how can I serve Krishna now? There'll be no chance for the mind to think of demoniac things. So if we're having a problem, just try to look to the fact that, oh, my mind's not busy enough serving Krishna. Where we are very busy serving, there's no time for any, for any maya. 
It's like when your cup is full, you can't put anything else in it. But we have to keep our mind and hearts and hands busy serving Krishna. Therefore, at every instant, we should be praying, Krishna, give me service. How can I serve you best? Show me how to serve you right now. And when Maya comes and presents something for us to do and we have a doubt, oh, is this good or not? Just ask yourself, how will this serve Krishna? Is this the best service to Krishna? The allurement of sense gratification fades when we think of that. Especially if you think about it I may see Krishna tonight. Today may be my last day. And if I see Krishna tonight, if I have to report before the bo boss tonight, will I want this on my record? Will I want this to be the most recent thing he sees? If one lives in the presence of death, It keeps us from doing many things that should not be done, and it will give us impetus to do many things that ought to be done immediately. Christ told a parable about a seed. If a seed falls into the ground and dies as a seed, it sprouts into a tree and becomes the greatest spreading everywhere, producing millions of more seeds. But it has to first die. Unless it die, it abides alone, he said. Similarly, as an individual consciousness, we have to die. We have to die to the individual self. We have to give up false ego. We have to surrender completely to Krishna. Then we can live eternally in Krishna. Actually, death is nothing but a strong transformation. Bhagavad Gita says that. What is that? Saranamri. Uh, o oh death, where is thy sting? O oh grave, where is thy victory? Death is swallowed up in victory. And that resurrection is the resurrection of the soul in devotional service. That is the rebirth, the second birth <coughs> to life eternal. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna.